Who are you going to invite? I want you to invite their spouse or their significant other of the month. You want them to feel welcome. They can bring whoever it is. And it's a relationship building. It's a psychological thing that you're going to be doing for each one of your staff and your vendors. You're listening to 5-Hour Real Estate Week, where you'll learn to consistently buy real estate in only five hours a week. So if you're ready to invest in real estate, achieve financial freedom, and own the lifestyle you deserve, even with your job, this is the show for you. Now, here's your host, Mike Butler. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the 5-Hour Real Estate Week podcast. My name is Mike Butler. I'm your host, and today's episode is part one of a four-part series with the topic of simple, cheap holiday gifts to make you a hero. Now, before we pull the trigger on any business decision, what I like to do with it is to chew on it and see if there's not a way where I can sort of kind of kill three birds with one rock. For example, you might want to give some gifts out. Well, if you could maybe put that in clothing or some other kind of tools, put your brand name on there, your company name, this and that, guess what? Now that gift has turned into an advertising expense for your business. So that's just a little cheap tip there. But anyway, so let's dive right into this. And we've got a four-part series in here because the first one here is time to take action on that is right now, not a day too late. So number one is we'll call it a company holiday party. Okay, and I'm scribbling that down right now for myself, a company holiday party. And I do this every year, except for COVID. Okay, we, you know, the world was shut down during that. But every year I do a company holiday party. And let me tell you, the best date and time to do this is a Saturday evening before Christmas. So, for example, this year, Christmas is on Sunday. Sunday the 25th. Okay, well, we're not going to have our company party on Christmas Eve. That ain't going to work. But let's go to the Saturday before that, and that would make it December 17th. And this is wonderful for so many reasons. I remember the kill three, four, five, six birds with one rock. The more you think about it, the more it's going to make sense. So December 17th is the ideal date for this to happen this year. Now, Where are you going to have this party? Well, you could have it at your home, and that's totally up to you. We never really pursued that. And what I would get is a private room, and we started out at a Mexican restaurant and maybe a pizza joint. I've done bowling alleys. I've done a very nice, swanky kind of bar that had live bands playing on the first floor, and they had a private meeting room upstairs with pool tables and things like that. And those things are awesome. So you get to pick out, you get to pick the venue. And when you pick out the venue, you want to make sure that you're talking to the right person. For example, one time we did a bowling alley and the the bowling alley manager, banquet manager, didn't pass this on to whoever the manager was going to be at Saturday night. We had, They had no idea that we were coming. So anyway, and you want the food arrangements to be set up buffet style. So think about this. So you got Mexican food. We had a private room. They set up a Mexican buffet. Okay, it accommodates all food choices, whether diabetic, vegans, all this and that. You can have vegetables. You don't have to do that. And it was pretty cheap, pretty easy. Okay, so always have it set up buffet style unless you want to take your team leaders and take them to a nice fancy restaurant. In addition to that, it's all up to you where you want to have it at. Now, who are you going to invite? I want to invite whoever you're going to invite. Now, get to that list in just a second. And I want you to invite their spouse and or their significant other of the month. And believe it or not, (laughs) one year we had one of our people, let's just say, brought their wife and their girlfriend, mistress, at the same time. And uh, the favorite word of that meeting was menage a trois or something like that. But anyway... Weird things can happen. So always don't don't refer to them as a spouse or this and that. But I always say, well, whoever your significant other of the month is. Okay, we live in a crazy world. But anyway, you want them to feel welcome like they can bring whoever it is. I don't care if it's their their kid or this and that. What about kids? Try to keep the kids away. Okay, I would encourage that because uh, this is for adults and and it's a relationship building. It's a psychological thing that you're going to be doing 
for each one of your staff and your vendors there. So here we are now. We're at uh, uh, the first week in no, well, actually second week in November, uh, day before the election, and you need to identify where you're going to have this party at December 17th. Okay, and then chew on it a little bit because that's going to be big. Now, what time is it going to be? I like to do, say, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. so they know that they can get up and get out of there. Now, how are you going to invite them and who you're going to invite? Well, I encourage you to create your own little invitation card, okay? And I don't care if it's done on a laser printer, a color printer. Go buy some invite cards. Make up your own. But Beth makes up these artsy-fartsy things that I can't even read, okay? The ones that I did... (laughs) Uh, years and years ago, I had like a champagne bottle with a cork popping and it says Vista, Vista holiday bash, just plain and simple, like a comic book or something. And that's fine. And so how are you going to reach out to them? Snail mail, email and text. And you want to make sure that you put the RSVP in there. Now, depending on your staff, your vendors, your team members, this and that, don't laugh at this guys, but some folks don't know what RSVP means. Okay. So set it up on your calendar and I want you or to have a staff person to actually call, text, whatever, each individual person that you invite to get them to confirm they're coming or they're not going to be there. Okay. And don't be offended if they can't make it. They might have a family plan. The wife might work at IBM or Microsoft and they're taking their their crew on a three-week cruise for a company party or something. But it means a lot when they know that you have invited them the holiday party that you're hosting, okay? So now what are you going to do? You're going to feed them, okay? So that's where we're going to have the buffet style uh, of food, of vittles, or whatever it is. I mean, I've done pizza back room, the pri- a private banquet room at a pizza joint, and they just bring out different kinds of pizzas, okay? And we do real easy on the booze. It's totally up to you, your choice, especially in today's crazy world. But like uh, when I first started doing it, I said, put Bud Lights in there. And Miller Lights, that's all they can get. Nothing else. None of this fancy stuff, especially in today's world with all this craft beer and stuff. What about hard liquor? Now, they can go upstairs or they can go to the real bar and buy themselves a hard liquor drink, okay? We're not going to do that. Maybe you get some cheap wine and have a, I don't know, let them have some cheap wine. And then you'll get a, you'll get a little bit of a bar bill and your food bill. And for probably, I'm going to guess 30 people or so. Maybe a, a little bit more. Uh, it's been anywhere from 600 to 800 bucks. The cheapest was at the pizza joint. So, uh, keep that in mind. The other one that was really, really good was a bowling alley because the bowling alley, two things going on. One is they had a bar up in front of the bowling alley and they had a live band playing there that night. So some of our folks went over there and continued drinking with the waitress and paying for their own booze and they had dances and carrying on. Another group would go and go bowling. And so some other ones would maybe go home, but we're not paying for the bowling, okay? And you're not going to pay for that. So snail mail, email, and text invites and get confirmation. So just because you send out, you know, emails or or invites to 50 people plus their spouses or 25 people plus their spouses or significant other of the month, that don't mean they're all going to come, okay? Some of them are going to confirm and still not show up. So try to nail that down because they're going to charge you by what you reserve and pay for, okay? So, now, who are you going to invite? Well, that's a big one. So, this year, we're going to target December 17th. You get to pick out the place. Another one that, that I like to use, but I can't do it during the holiday season, is my country club, because they are just booked up with all kinds of company parties. So, the country clubs are out for this time of the year. But I mentioned some things that you can do there. So, who are you going to invite? Well, obviously, your office help, okay? If you've got office help, Part-time, full-time, it's up to you. You can invite whoever you want, for that matter. But here's a list. I'm just going to rattle down this list to give you some ideas of some of the folks that I have invited over the years. Okay, so office self, both part-time and full-time, lawn service people. If you've got a good lawn service guy, make sure that you invite them and their spouse to this party, okay? Because you want to make them feel like they're valuable to your business. Plumber, licensed plumber is what I'm talking about, not your in-house handyman. Licensed plumber, okay. HVAC vendor, okay. We use Mike Jarvis on all of that. Pre service people. I had a mom and pop, I mean, a, a, a husband and wife team for years and years and years, and they could remove a tree. That's only people that worked in it. They had 
beautiful looking equipment and trucks. And they may, if they, if they were going to take a tree down on the golf course, you never know they were there. They were that awesome. And so I would invite them. Now they never showed up, but to get the invites just made them feel like a million bucks. What about your garage killers? My garage killers. What are you talking about? Well, garage killer is somebody that you hire or that you use to haul off trash, debris, rehab, construction, debris, all this junk. Okay. And then on some houses I bought, they were down in the, the other end of town. They might have like a one car wooden garage that was leaning real bad. <laughs> and so if I pushed into it a little bit, it'd just fall over. Well, I, I'd call my garage killer. And so I just kept that name with him. And so invite him and, and his spouse or girlfriend or whoever. So garage killers is there. What about people at supply houses? Now, this is not everybody. Okay. But you know what? I might have to uh, break this down. We're going to get through this list and then I'm going to put it into the next to the next one. Okay. So supply houses. So this would be like, we've got Ace Hardware. It's a franchise and this owner owns like maybe four or five of them here in my town. Well, there's a guy that handles our account in the main store named Dave Lindemann. And Dave just as goes, he bends over backwards to take care of me and my guys and my company. So he gets an invite every year. Guess how many times he showed up? Zero. Okay. But it's still, he still talks about it every year. Okay. Supply houses, maybe Home Depot Pro Desk. Maybe you got a person that goes over and above. Invite them and their, their spouse. Okay. Uh, Lowe's, electric supply houses, plumbing supply houses. If you got somebody that really goes overboard for you, think about them this time of the year. I invite my real estate attorney. I got two of them there. One that does the closings, the other one does the evictions and actually goes to court. Insurance agent. He's about 50 50 as far as attending, but isn't he, isn't he or she part of your team? Absolutely. Makes them feel great. This is the one that most folks don't think about. What about the deputy sheriff who handles the set outs involved with evictions? Oh my gosh. If, usually there's two of them. So if you invite them, okay, to come and bring their spouse for this and that, where is they going to put you on the pecking order of a priority when it's time to, hey, you got an eviction coming up. Let's, they'll scoot you up faster. Okay. That's pretty good stuff. All right. What about your roofer? Floor carpet guys. We don't use carpet anymore, but back in the day, my carpet guy and his spouse, they show up. What about electrician? What about any resident managers? If you have apartment communities and you got a resident manager that is your eyes and ears and shows the apartments, doesn't collect rent or anything. Why not invite them to make them feel special? Real estate agents or brokers that bring you deals or it's an integral part of your team. Okay. Don't leave them out. What about a banker or a credit union? Now I'm thinking primarily loan officers or something like that, or maybe, you know, a head honcho of a bank or something like that. If you're in a small town, I'm just rattling off a list of some of the folks that I've invited in the past. Okay. General contractors. Now that's a big fancy word. And I, my term for that, for the most part, General contractors, think of independent contractors, those that do your siding, gutters, window trim, putting in windows and doors, all that kind of stuff. Your concrete guy, anybody involved in your turnover teams, okay? Think about that. And if you're having a hard time thinking about that, go into your investor books and click through your list of vendors and you'll see. You'll see who it is or just do a quick vendor report and see who got paid this year and how much you paid them, okay? Those are just some ideas. And so think about that. You can invite them. And what we're going to get into in part two is I'm going to show you how to set up your room. And we talked about booze and then failing to plan is planning to fail. And then what you need to do at the actual meeting, your holiday bash that you have. I want to point out one thing. Ed Weck been with me for, well, he, he died probably six, seven, eight years ago. But he was with me almost from day one. He was my siding guy, window guy, door guy, gutter guy, all of that. And he would start asking my maintenance supervisor in June and July, hey, has Mike got the party scheduled yet? Has Mike got the party scheduled yet? And so this stuff means a lot to them, okay? It really, truly does. And the the bang for the buck here is just through the roof, okay? It's over the moon for your benefits there. So let's whack this one off here and we'll get into part two of this four part series. And right now, this time of the year, we've had some changes going on in our market, all kinds of stuff. I want you to take advantage 
of your best strategy to acquire great deals in this crazy, insane market that we have now. And that is the proper, legal, and right way to take over payments on existing loans already in place. Go check it out. Go to jumpinloans.com, jumpingloans.com. And if you can't remember that, just go to mikebutler.com, click on jumpinloans.com. And I want you to write down this coupon code. It's called JUMP, J-U-M-P, 22. Jump 22 and you get 50% off. We'll ship it out to you next business day. Okay. So audio, stay tuned. I'll see you on the next one. Glad you joined us for another episode of five hour real estate week. The best thing you can do now is put this information to action. To help you get started, Mike created a free resource for you called how to buy 50 houses a year, even with your job. Download it now by going to mikebutler.com forward slash 50 houses. And we'll see you on the next episode.